life. What did he mean? By repentance, he meant turning away from all they knew to be wrong, and what was essentially harming their relationship with God and each other. Perhaps he had in mind they should turn away from selfishness, from idols, maybe money, maybe power or control, or unkindness or cruelty, or ignoring the needs of others. But then what were they to believe? They were to believe that God's kingdom was coming very close. The kingdom the prophets had foretold and God had promised. The kingdom that Jesus was bringing and was the king who was to come. They were, they were to believe that Jesus was the one they were waiting for and that the good news was that he would defeat sin and death and transform them and the world. Although, of course, they were going to face a lot of surprises to how that worked out. I'm sure the fishermen had heard that message, but then he approached them as they were busy with their nets and he called them to follow him. What did he plan for them? Jesus planned to teach them more about God and his kingdom. He wanted them to learn from him by being close to him, by watching and listening and then to carry out his work, proclaiming the good news and bringing healing to the sick and the sinner. So Jesus invited them to come to him, to follow him, go and share the good news, to fish for people, people who were hungry for God, who needed that satisfaction of knowing him. They were big asks, but of course they would bring great blessing brought great blessing to many, including you and I, of course. You know, when I thought about come, follow and go, they're all involving movement, aren't they? And actually all of them you need your feet for. And so it was more than agree with Jesus they were called to do. They were called to respond through being active. Now, most of you, I'm sure, have repented, do believe in Jesus in some way, and have heard his call. And then I started to think about shoeboxes. Because it's shoebox Sunday, isn't it? Now, who can tell me what shoeboxes originally contained? Anybody got an idea? Shoes, yeah, you're all awake this morning. What do you think? Shoes, very good. Is it Verity? Yes. Well done, Verity. Do you want to come and help me? because I might need somebody to hold up what I'm going to show in a minute. So if you come up here, that would be great. In the meantime, what did the gravestone say to the buried shoe? May your soul rest in peace. <laughs> and what type of shoe do you make from a banana? A slipper. Okay, I'll stop there. All right. Now, just hang there and I want you to hold up the shoes when I give them to you. Can you do that for me? Yeah, brilliant, thank you. So what sort of shoes might disciples wear? Well, I thought about my own journey of discipleship, which I've walked for over 30 years now. 30 years ago, I repented and I believed I came to Jesus and I have been following and of course I have gone. My latest journey has brought me here, thankfully. So I thought about the shoes that Jesus had given me and will give you and me, I believe, some help on our journey. I confess I'm a bit of a bargain seeker. When a shoe sale is on, I sometimes buy a pair of shoes that I don't quite need yet. I know my slippers are gonna wear out one day or my trainers, so I just buy a pair and store them. My family teased me about this because they would buy and wear new shoes just as they needed them. Shoes are made to be worn, but I think that keeping shoes ready for various uses is important, don't you? Yeah. And so here are some selections of my shoes that I thought would help us on our journey of discipleship. Now, can you hold those up for me? Yeah? <coughs> Now those are my best party shoes. Hopefully you can see them on the screen as well. I wear them to go out on a special occasion. 
And it's all about celebrating, usually. I celebrate birthdays and Christmas and anniversaries and achievements, too. When we think about all that Jesus has done, isn't there a lot to celebrate? As disciples, shouldn't we be celebrating his love for us, his coming as a human being, his dying and rising for our forgiveness, his gift of the Holy Spirit? We also might wear our best shoes to come to church. Actually, I, don't, I did not look at the choir because they thought they were going to hide behind robes today. But party shoes should remind us of coming to church and of celebrating and also growing in our relationship with God through Jesus. And the scripture verse that can remind us is rejoice in the Lord always from Philippians 4. Disciples rejoice in Jesus and offer him praise and thanksgiving. Okay, you can put those down. I've got the next pair now. Okay. Brilliant. What do you think these are? Trainers. Yes. Well done. They're quite clean trainers. They're my reserve pair. <laughs> I wear trainers to go and do things. I might wear them to play tennis in the summer or to run maybe, or certainly to go out for a walk. They're shoes to wear when we go, when we put into practice what we've learnt about Jesus and what we've learnt from him. We go to share the good news in word and deed. We share his love in all sorts of ways, including by filling shoe boxes. We care for our neighbour. We talk about our faith. We donate to good causes. We serve in our church and our community. And Jesus gives us all we need to do that. So here is the verse that goes with these trainers. Love your neighbour as yourself, from Mark 12. Okay, let's go on to the next pair. Now, these are quite big, all right. Can you manage those? Can you manage both? There we go. Now, I'm glad I brought these with me to this area. My walking boots. Now these are important when the going is a bit tough and I need extra support, particularly if I'm walking over uneven or muddy paths or climbing steep slopes. I haven't ventured right up yet, but I'm getting there. The support of boots is helpful. So when we go out from here, do we need support? What do we face? Because of course we have the reassurance that Jesus is there. He will equip us, he will support us, he will help us as we go out onto uneven ground sometimes. Wherever we travel, Jesus said, I am with you always. Okay, you can put those down now. Do you know what those are? Sandals, yeah, good. I'm glad they're recognizable, that's excellent. Sandals are lovely to wear on warm, sunny, sunny, sunny days, aren't they? I can put away my socks and my tights and my boots and my shoes and wear flip-flops or sandals. It gives you a sense of being free and unencumbered, doesn't it? When we come to Jesus, he sets us free from the power of sin, from the guilt of sin, from the price of sin, which is death. Remember the freedom we have in Christ and be thankful. Remember that out of love for you and me, Jesus came. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Disciples base their lives on that truth. Thank you very much. Slippers, yeah. When I put my slippers on, I do so to relax or when I'm pottering about the house because they're comfortable and at this time of year they're warm. Doesn't it feel like you're pampering yourself a bit if you put on your slippers and your, your dressing gown or whatever? And it feels like I'm caring for myself a bit when I do that. I stop rushing, slow down, take life more gently. So slippers remind me of being cared for and being encouraged to rest, recover from busyness and stress. Jesus calls us to come to him and rest in him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, said Jesus in Matthew chapter 11. Verity, you have been such a star. Should we give Verity a clap? Thank you so much. So you've had a whistle-stop tour through my shoes and um, just some of them. 
And uh, I hope that it's helped to remind you of some important aspects of discipleship. And I hope you'll find that helpful in your journey with Jesus. Can I encourage you to talk to Jesus? Ask him for whatever shoes you might need and whatever you might need to follow him faithfully and go out to serve in his world as his disciples. Amen.